You know, if I could go ahead and call Mr. Ian, I, I think yeah, that we can proceed and, and uh, I perhaps I've gone to that. Steve? I can play the video on my laptop as well as me and Okay. Uh, this, with the court's permission? Absolutely. Yes. Take a look at Sam and stand on the show. Go ahead. Uh, swear you in. You ready to write him? You solemnly swear or affirm the testimony to give this matter to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I affirm my honesty. Please have a seat and introduce yourself to the judge. My name is Garrett Ian. Last name spelled E A N. And Mr. Ian, do uh, you live here in King? Yes. Uh, do you know Rich Paul? Yes. Uh, there was a video that was played earlier uh, uh, today. Uh, are you familiar with that video? I am. Uh, are you familiar with that video because you took the video on your, your own camera? I was holding the camera while that video was captured. And were you present on the, the town square uh, when that video was taken? Yes. Is that a fair and accurate representation of things that occurred? Yes. Uh, are you familiar with the voice of Rich Paul? I am. Are you familiar with the voice of, uh, of the other um, males that you hear talking on there other than um, the man coming across the square? For the most part, there were many people on the square that evening, so it's possible there are some voices that wouldn't be able to identify. Uh, I believe there, uh, there's a, a gentleman who was um, there on the square named Andy. Uh, do you know that, that man, Andy? Um, I do know him. Uh, and, and can you hear his voice on the video? Yes. Uh, is there also a, a, another man generally known as Andy? Yes. Uh, can you hear his voice on the video? Yes, towards the end of the altercation, you can hear his voice. Uh, the, uh, the, the, the statement, uh, do, don't you want to stay and kick our asses? Do you have any recollection or knowledge as to who it was that spoke those words? I'm not sure. It, it sounds like Rich. It might have been Yankee. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not too familiar with who that might be. It does sound like Rich, though. Uh, anyway. Are Mr. Paul's and Yankee's voices similar? Um, they could be based on the, the tone of speaking. Um, if you hear towards the end of the altercation, it, it sounds like Yankee having just witnessed that sounds kind of agitated, so the voice takes on like a, a sort of more of like a harsher tone. Uh, you are friendly approach with the disc. Uh, yes. And, uh, Mr. Ian, do you have a, a functioning computer there? I do. And if he wants to approach to see uh, as well. I, I have previously given a copy of this to Mr. Wood. I don't know whether he's reviewed it or not. I hope that's enough support for the laptop. I think there is no audio on, on this uh, slow down version. I, I would ask that the court, uh, in observing this, be mindful of of the actions of several of the other individuals, uh, particularly uh, the rather angry looking uh, uh, African American man, uh, and uh, specifically uh, be mindful of the crimes of, of threatening, um, theft, unauthorized taking, uh, tampering with physical evidence, and criminal mischief, uh, and, and disorderly conduct. Excuse me. And so this is the video slowed down to one third speed. It was a three minute segment, it's now nine minutes. It begins when the man with the bucket who is crossing the square is leaving the square. If you could uh, play the video and, and perhaps skip forward until the uh, uh, angry man flips his uh, backpack uh, to one of the other attackers. Okay. Uh, just in the interest of time. So prior to that occurring, you can see the man's in the road while the light is green, so it was holding up traffic. Well, There's a way that you can just back up a little bit. I'm having a hard time seeing. See, thank you. Just, okay. so, that just, just uh, if you can, you can let it play from about there. It's just a. Uh... All right. So this time, um, the person who was somewhat threatening is walking into the road. I don't remember what he was saying at this exact moment, but. So if you don't remember what he said, just uh, if you could just let it play for a moment so that the court can see uh, things clearly. Just back up a couple inches, thank you. Yeah. So I noticed the man with the bucket continued to walk up uh, north. 
on the west side of the street there. And he was continuing to say things as well. He was yelling, get a job. Hey, Matt. 
And we can see Rich on the right side of the screen. As someone's approaching him, he's moving backwards, and you can see the camera is running on the ground. You see the screen is on. I'm sorry, you said that you could tell that the camera was rolling because the, the screen was on? Yes, it has a shut off feature where um, if, it's, if you don't do anything with about 30 seconds, the name of the camera was a Canon Vixia HFR21. And it had a shut off feature if, if you uh, close the screen open while you're recording, it'll remain recording. So well, the fact that the camera. Um, I found out that it was smashed, presumed well, in the video. Uh, this someone pointed out to Let me ask you a different question. Did someone pick it up? Yes. Uh, is that Terry? Yes, Terry picks up the camera. Okay, and as you listen to this, um, um, the audio that goes along with this portion of the video, can you hear a, a, a crunching sound as Mr. Terry is right there? Yes, you can. have picking something up. In fact, I think in a moment you see him throw something, or maybe he's already thrown it and he's picking it up to pieces right now. And, and do you understand, it, or do you know whether or not that was your camera? Yes, that, that was my camera. Um, thank you. Um, you. You may stop the video now. Um, as, as you uh, were present uh, there, did you see um, Mr. Paul uh, 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 act violently towards anyone? No. In fact, I would say that, as you see in the video, when people are approaching, he is actually moving away. Uh, th does he uh, move to strike anyone? No. Uh, does he uh, uh, do anything other than try to stop a violent attack? No. Uh, the, uh, uh, the, the man that, that punched Andy, uh, do you know who that was? The initial puncher or the second person? The first one. <laughs> I may know who it is, but I cannot say for sure. Okay. Uh, do you know the name of that man? I believe the name is James Michael Phillips. Uh, Mr. Ian, did you do anything with uh, either the, the full speed video that uh, Mr. Webb had played or the slowed down portion of it? Uh, did you do anything with that? After capturing it that evening? Yes, let me ask a better question. Did you give it to the Keene Police Department? Um, well, what I first did is what I do with most of the video I shot, was putting it up online, categorizing it by date, time, <laughs> place, uh, what was on the video, the camera that it was shot on. Um, so all of that was put on a YouTube channel called Freeman TV Raw that I operated. And uh, it just so happened that the next evening, there was another violent incident in Central Square, and in this case, someone was hospitalized. Um, so in following up on that, that day, um, I wasn't there at the time, but I showed up later and I spoke with people on the scene. I collected uh, video from people. I uploaded some of that video. Uh, I made chronological lists of it. And then that evening, or maybe the, it was either that evening or the next morning, I sent an email to the Keene Police Department from Keene Peaceful Streets, which said uh, there was violence that occurred. Here's all of the video that's been collected from different people. And then I also pointed out that there was an incident that occurred the night before um, in which I believe some of the same actors were involved. Some of the same people I identified as being there the next day and were also in the square the evening before. Is that this video? Yes, this video was when I, I, you know, I didn't directly send a link to the, of the video to the King Police. I linked them to a post that described the video and had a, a direct link to the video. Did you send that to a particular uh, officer of the King Police Department? I sent it to Todd Lawrence as he was the highest ranking officer on the scene the second night. That's Lieutenant Lawrence? Yes. Uh, and uh, he was investigating the incidents the following night? Uh, presumably. I knew that he was on the square. There were, I believe, about four officers that were on the square that evening, and I recognized him, so he was the one that, uh, I recognized him as the highest ranking, so he was the uh, one the information to him. Have, have you, uh, since the, the video that you that we played was captured, have you been contacted by anyone from the King Police Department relative to an investigation of any of the events of that night? No. Yeah. Thank you. One more question. Cross examination. Yes, thank you. Um, sir, so you were the one that labeled the video as happening on June 2nd, 2014, is that right? That is correct. And that was, in fact, the date that the incident occurred? Yes. Um, and the comment that you can hear don't you want to stay and kick our asses? You said on direct, quote, it sounds like Rich, and then again, it does sound like Rich, though. To you, in fact, it does sound like Rich, right? It could be Rich. Well, what you said was it does sound like Rich. Yes. And that's what you meant, right? Yes. Okay. Now, um, 
also later in the video, I presume you've watched the whole video. Yes. And you, obviously you were there too. Um, you heard the statement, we could definitely use some backup as much as you can muster. That was rich too, wasn't it? I believe so. That was several minutes after the incident occurred. He was on the phone with somebody trying to get people to come down, is that right? Mm -hmm. is, it, is that a yes? Yes. So Rich had called someone, who did he call? I'm not sure, it, it might have been Ian Freeman. And he was trying to get him to send more people down as much as you could muster, right? Yes, the idea was that more people would make for a safer square. You were inside his head, you know what the idea was? Well, I think we all had a collective understanding uh, that, that there was an issue with there's violence occurring and there needs to be more peaceful people, and I'd say specifically cameras around. All right. Um, the defendant was holding something in his right hand as we went through that video. And it wasn't styrofoam, it wasn't flowers, it was a stick, wasn't it? Well, I suppose stick would be a, a rudimentary way of defining it. I believe it was a monopod. A monopod. Perfect. Excellent. For him? Yes, that's what a monopod is for. All right. And if he were to strike someone with it, it very well could injure him. Yes? Striking someone with any object can cause injury, sure. Particularly a monopod, which is a, a solid object, right? It is solid. Right. <laughs> you said um, about that couple that was standing right near the incident, well, they seemed somewhat worried. Sure. Because they did, in fact, seem somewhat worried, right? I'd imagine anyone witnessing that would be somewhat troubled by it. Okay. Yeah, the, the couple that I, I uh, pointed out in the pink and the yellow, uh, was there a change in their from your apparent view of the situation when it became violent? I wouldn't really, I wasn't paying attention to them to be honest, but it, it's, I don't know if they were any, in any way engaged or anything more than just observing. I mean, they, they walked through the square even as, as um, uh, there was the, the yellow. Sure, and, and there, it wasn't a, even as there's the violent attack, that's when they, they seemed to be uh, concerned about what's going on. Mm -hmm. I guess. I would, yeah, I'd imagine everyone there was concerned for what's going on. With the words, or yeah, everyone's concerned with the words or the black. It seems that the words are what caught the attention of the, the group that was across the street, the few people that charged the square. Um, I honestly don't know if, if the other people that were in the square were bothered or upset by the words at all. Actually, just a few more here. Um, roughly, where, where do you live, by the way? I live here in Keene. Where? Leverett Street. Okay. Um, after, you're pretty close to the defendant, or know him pretty well? I've known the defendant for some time. Uh, that's sort of relative, so a couple of years, or? A few years. So, you had a, a substantial amount of contact with him after he got out of jail this last time, is that right? Uh, sure, I, I see him often. And can, can you give a rough, rough estimate of how many times you've seen him smoke marijuana? Uh, Since he got out. Hmm. I'm, I'm sorry, if I could get a point of fact, I don't know if he means, if Mr. Webb means uh, two weeks ago, or if he means uh, most of a year ago. After he got out of jail in December 2013, to today, roughly how many times do you see him smoke marijuana? I won't hold you to an exact number, of course. Yeah, I don't know if you can put a number on that because, uh, you know, Mr. Paul is a civil disobedience activist, so there's many times that there'll be gatherings in the square, people will be consuming either cannabis or tobacco or you know, different products. And I, I, I don't really make a point to ask what people are actually consuming. I know, but um, 
let's limit it just to those times where you know he was smoking marijuana, because I assume you can recognize marijuana when you smell it. Um, I would be able to, sure. All right. Let's limit it to those number of times when you actually knew he was smoking marijuana because you could smell it. Roughly, how many times did the defendant smoke marijuana between when he got out and today? Mm -hmm. well, I, I don't know if I could put a number on it. It was an estimate. Ballpark. Range. I don't know. Uh, well, I, I guess maybe like when he first got out, it was uh, more frequent. I haven't really seen it recently. I know since he's been, uh, you know, taken in for the probation violation, I don't believe I've seen it since then. Uh, well, right, since he, so he's only been out in a very short time, a couple of weeks. I'm not talking about those two weeks. We can set those aside. Just from when he got out in December 2013 till when he went in on the VOP in June of 2014, you saw him smoke marijuana a lot, yes? Well, a lot sounds like a, a relative term. Um, <laughs> Which is why I asked for a range. So if you can give us a range, that'd be great. Um, I imagine that the defendant is a daily user. I believe he's open about it. All right. Nothing for other things. No more. Thank you. Can we sit down? Mr. Right. Paul, is there anything that you'd like to say? Um, if, if you're going to say anything, you have to stand. I haven't, I haven't given you a hard time by not standing when I enter the courtroom, but if you're going to address the court, you have to stand. I um, appreciate that. Yeah, I mean, basically, I just want to get on with my life. And, you know, it, you, you took 12, 12 months of it, and if that's not enough, you can take some more. But the probation thing is, you know, it's, it's not a good way to live. You know, if I hadn't been on probation, then I at least could have taken a break from civil disobedience by going to Colorado, because civil disobedience is tiring, and I'm tired. But, but I can't just stand down and say, oh no, don't do it to me, do it to somebody else. If you're going to do it to somebody, you might as well do it to me. You know, but, you know, I would... I would rather get on with my life as soon as possible and have this not be an issue and be able to make commitments to an employer and know that I will be able to stick with those commitments uh, because otherwise it's not fair to them, it's not fair to me. I'd like to visit my parents, you know. Um, they're in Michigan, but I don't really want to live in Michigan. It's pretty much between Colorado and New Hampshire. And I can't transfer probation to Colorado because I don't have any family there. Um, so, you know, I, I guess that's all I can say. I believe that requiring me not to smoke uh, marijuana does violate my right to conscience. Uh, my First Amendment right of free expression because marijuana is a sacrament in my church. And although it doesn't have legal um, legal power, I think it, sac it, it, it violates some words that are very important to me. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, and that amongst these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that it is to secure these rights that governments are instituted amongst men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. When Jefferson was asked to clarify this a little bit, he said, doesn't giving them the right to pursuit of happiness give them the right to do anything they want? And he said, no, because all men are created equal. And therefore, in his vision, the end of your right to pursue happiness was where you harm somebody else. I still haven't done that. I still haven't harmed anybody. And I just want it over. That's all I've got. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Have a seat.